This is Mustard, former champion of Galar and the person who taught Leon everything he knows about Pokemon battles. This old man quit the Pokemon League after one of his Pokemon died over 30 years ago. Now he spends his days playing the wrong quest game and occasionally teaching trainers a thing or three about Pokemon battles at his dojo. Anyways, I was wondering if this old man could become champion. Again, a lot of things have changed since he was the top trainer in Galar, so it would be interesting to see if his abilities still stand out. To find out, I played through the game as Mustard. Well, as a Pokemon on Mustard's team. Oh ho, that's an interesting monologue you've got going on there. But the thing is... I don't have a Wulu on my team. Well, you do now. Oh, right, I should mention that this video is part of a series where I follow along a trainer as a Pokemon on their team. You don't have to have seen the previous episodes to enjoy this one, but if you like the concept, do check the rest of them out. Link in the description. Also, my super secret sources tell me you should consider sub... uh... Substitute? No, no. Hmm. <laughs> Forget your little line, Wulukins. Mustard! This is the second time you've interrupted my monologue. Well, maybe consider not monologuing so much. Hmm. Anywho, you were saying you wanted to see if I could become champion again, right? Right. And why is that? Um, I don't remember. So you don't remember your lines. You don't remember why you want what you want. What do you remember? Well, I remember my name. Some guy with a big funny hat and uh, before that, uh, well, uh, I remember being extremely cold, but in a comforting way. Huh. Weird. Anywho, can we go and see if he can become champion now, Mustard? Ha ha, it's been a while since I had a proper battle with Leon and all the new gym leaders. This might be fun. Why not? Let's go. The problem with Mustard's team is that unlike all the other trainers, everything except for this bird is available at the start of the game. Plot-wise, he begins the game with three Slowpoke, a Mianfu, and a Shinx, but since I'll be using his endgame team, I only caught the one Slowpoke that we have to catch before going to the Isle of Armor, and then started looking for the rest of his actual endgame team, which didn't take long since this cute little Rockruff spawned right on the way to the dojo. Who's a good boy? And I'm not allergic to you because you're made out of rocks, and not fur. From there, I made my way to the digging paw and climbed up towards the Tower of Darkness where most of Mustard's team can be found, like Mianfu, Mustard's lead Pokemon. There is one more very important Pokemon from Mustard's team that only appears up here, and that's this guy. Jangmo, a sword-exclusive dragon type that can be found either in a Dynamax den in the wild area or as a wandering Pokemon, right here. The bad news was that this one I found was at level 22, and I cannot catch anything over level 20 until I have the first gym back. Typically, this wouldn't be a problem, just come back another day. But gamers, I don't have that kind of option. With Splatoon 3 content to be made, a side job doing academic research, and the next Pokemon games right on the horizon, I am short on time and should probably start looking for an editor instead of bringing it up in the video, but hey, uh, this Wulu likes to be transparent. I no longer have the luxury of wasting an hour time traveling in a Pokemon game to look for another overworld spawn of Jangmo, especially when there's one already spawned in and ripe for the capture. But there was another problem. It was almost 6 p.m. and I had a stream at 7, which meant I had an hour to go defeat Milo, catch this dragon, and eat dinner. Thankfully, I've done a speedrun of this game before and also played through it like at least 20 times, so I kinda know how to get through the beginning area as fast as possible. On Route 3, you can easily avoid most of the trainer fights. Just go up through the grass, go through the grass, and uh, you guessed it, go through the grass again. After an A button mashing challenge with Sonya, run on the right side so that the mailman doesn't see you, and then fight the school boy who has two bugs. Since Mustard already has Rockruff on his team, this fight was a total breeze. From there, we hit the mines, chasing the Carcoal to avoid all trainers except for the worker by the bridge who cannot be skipped. Her Diglett and Drillbore are a bit bulkier than I remember, but Mianfu was able to handle them fast enough. Uh, then uh, there's Bead. I don't have any good matchup against Bead. Thankfully, his Solosis is extremely squishy, and Gothita takes a ton of damage from our Fury Swipes. Rockruff is out next and somehow misses throwing a rock in a tunnel full of rocks and then gets tickled with which nerfs our attack stat, we're gonna have to throw two rocks now instead of one. Sadly, two rocks are nowhere near enough to defeat the pink hat, so I sent Slowpoke out next to put it to sleep and then spammed acid to take it down. Now that we are in turf field, it's time to spam the A button some more, then hurt a bunch of Wulu to get through the gym challenge. We do have to fight one gym trainer here, and I hate to admit it, but it took four turns for Slowpoke to defeat this one flower. Not gonna lie, having a Slowpoke on the team three runs in a row is making me realize just how unreliable this Pokemon is in the early game. With my Wulu 
two friends out of the way, it's time to face off against Milo. I left Slowpoke in the lead but didn't bother healing since I knew it can't do much anyways, so I put the Gossifleur to sleep and got knocked out with a Magical Leaf before I could start spamming Acid. Mian Fu was out next, dealing major damage with a Fake Out and eventually taking out the first flower. Now the real question was, how are we supposed to defeat the Jaren Kondal? Because once again, we don't have a good matchup on our team. The answer is by stalling. Mian Fu used the tech to stall one turn and got knocked out the second and Rockruff Dynamax to use Max Guard and stall the last turn of Milo's Dynamax. Then we set up a Sandstorm with Max Rockfall, barely survived an attack and tried to do some more damage. Tried. With 3 HP to go, Rockruff couldn't do much else, so I had to use Leer to lower Eldegoss's defenses. The rest of the battle and the timely release of this video which is totally late were all in my fluffy little hands. My dirty, cheating, revive using hands. And this is why I have a rule that only lets me use one healing item per battle. No revives. This felt so wrong, but I couldn't afford to get stuck on this fight. I'm sure that the real Mustard can handle himself against Milo with his 3 fast slowpoke alone, but no time. No time to try this theory. Anywho, I flew back to the Isle of Armor, ran up the stairs, and started to panic as the little dragon refused to be caught. Pokeballs failed, great balls failed, and it was buffing itself up ready to one-shot anything I send out next, including me! With our last Pokemon out on the field, all I could do was hope. And hope worked out. We managed to catch the Jangmoa with enough time to go and eat dinner before stream. Except there was one big problem with this Jangmoa. You know what they say about karma, right? That revive helped me get to the dragon in time, but the dragon... It had the wrong ability. Mustard's dragon has soundproof, not bulletproof. But this was gonna be a problem for future me. Om nom 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 nom. Since I had a bit more time to record after stream, I flew back to the digging pa and tried to look for a Shinx. In my rush to catch Jang Moo, I had completely forgotten that these little guys spawn in the training lowlands when it's raining. And there was one there just vibing in the grass, waiting for me to catch it. If only I had taken a step back to think, I could have had that Shinx on the team from the very beginning and wouldn't have had to use that revive. As the Bulgarian saying goes, Burza Tarabuta Sramza Maestura, and I obviously did not learn my lesson from the Ingo run. Now that we've caught every Pokemon that Mustard has from the Isle of Armor, it's time to permabench Slowpoke and get back to the Galar Gym Challenge. That means it's time to go and fight my favorite gym leader, Nessa! <laughs> to avoid any and all suffering, I decided to lead the battle with Luxio, but this is Nessa we're talking about, of course there's gonna be suffering. Luxio failed to one-shot Galdine with an electric type move, meaning it would have to take two one Water pulse attacks, and Barascuta immediately slaps us with a water jet before getting knocked out. With all the damage it took so far, there was absolutely no hope for Luxio against the giant turtle. Mian Fu was the next obvious choice, not to use fake out since Dynamax Pokemon can't flinch, but to use Detect and stall out an extra turn. Of course, that means we're getting obliterated the very next turn, but hey, at least Nessa's Dynamax is done. I tried to be funny with Rockruff and its double team attack, but uh, turtle plus rain equals absolute pain. And since I didn't want to get my wool wet, that covered the dragon is going to act as Mustard's ace Pokemon for now, Dynamax and all. Our Wormwind didn't do much damage, but at least it also lowers Dreadnought's attack stat, meaning that for once, I'm not gonna have to worry about this thing one-shotting me. And of course, this is Nessa we're talking about, of course she's gonna get a crit on the very next turn. After a third turn of Max Wormwind, our Dynamax was also over and it was time for the big moment of truth. Was this Jengmoo worth all the trouble? The answer is sadly... Yes, yeah, totally worth it. Best Dragon Award. Let's go, Jang Moo. It's been so long since I've had an easy win against Nessa, and by easy, I mean I didn't have to show up and do anything. I could almost cry. Almost. Next up is the Fire Type Gym, where you have to catch or clobber some Pokemon. And the only reason I bring up the Gym mission is that that's when Rockruff evolved into Lycanroc, making this the best timed evolution in all the runs I've done so far. Since I still gotta follow conventions, the battle with Kabu starts out with Mianfu in the lead, using Fake Out and Fury Swipes to chip away the Nine Tails health and then realizing I could have just been using force bomb to paralyze the fox instead. Unfortunately we were on fire in more than one way so Mianfu went down. Jang Moo got demoted from its ace position especially since it failed to finish off nine tails with a single headbutt but it still holds a special place in my heart since it pulled that funny number on Kabu using dragon tail to swap out Arcanine and forcing Kabu into dynamaxing his bug halfway through the battle. Luxio managed to bulk through a G-Max flutterby allowing it to fully stall out the dynamax and now it's it's time for Lycanroc to shine, dynamaxing and squishing the bug like the bug it is. This left Kabu with just his Arcanine, but his poor little teacup Chihuahua can't do anything against our giant Irish wolfhound. <laughs> Three gym badges in the bag. What's up, Mustard? You're looking a bit off. My bad, my bad. I was just thinking, exactly how long were you planning on being a Wooloo? Uh, forever? Hmm. 
What's wrong with me being a wulu? Well, when my student brought you over to the dojo, he told me that you were a little lost and that I should keep you company until that time comes. What's that supposed to mean? How am I supposed to know? Avery can be a little weird sometimes. <laughs> Anywho, I thought we could just sit around and play video games. But I liked your idea of trying to become champion again, so here we are. What does that have to do with me being a Wooloo? Oh right, Avery said you'd be changing to a different Pokemon soon. Very soon. But we're almost halfway through the gym challenges, and you're still very much a Wooloo. I don't know what to tell you, Mustard. I'm just a Wooloo. I can't randomly turn into another Pokemon. Well, unless I evolve, but that ain't happening. How come? Oh, because of this Everstone. It's my emotional support. Buddy. Besides, I like being a Wooloo. Well, you can keep on being a Wooloo. That's fine with me. I just hope you're willing to help out in battles if push comes to shove. Of course you can count on me. I might be fluffy, but I am... Okay, I'm not that strong, but I can probably finish off a Pokemon that's in the red. Haha, <laughs> good enough for me. Now let's make our way to Stow on side and face off against Gym Leader B. <gasps> Hmm. While out and about in the wild area, Mustard decided to go and spend some of those watts he'd gotten from the Diggin' Paw and bought a bunch of useful TRs for his team. I bet those fairy type moves will do us wonders. We also stopped by a history museum and Hammerlock, beat up some random team yell grunts, and a very weird artist. Oh, and also Luxio evolved into a Luxray. Now time to teach it play rough. The battle against B started out on the wrong foot. Mianfu used Fake Out to do some chip damage, then ran away using U turn. Knowing we're likely to get hit with a powerful revenge attack, Mustard swapped in. Jang Moo, who did manage to bulk through the hit. Unfortunately, Hitmontop was too quick for any further dragon shenanigans. Next up is Luxray, who intimidates Hitmontop and finishes it off with its Psychic Fangs, another TR move that we grab from the wild area. B tries to counter our Psychic specialty with a Pangaro, but we also know Play Rough, which will do 4 times the damage to this dark fighting type Pokemon. Surfetch managed to bulk through a turn of Psychic Fangs, but couldn't dish out enough damage to finish off our Electric Lion, which leaves B with just her Dynamax Machamp. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Luxray couldn't do much more in this battle, and since Mianfu had forgotten how to use Detect in order to learn U-Turn, it wasn't too useful as a staller this time around. That meant we'd have to use Lycanroc's first turn of Dynamax to guard and wait for B's Machamp to lose some of its muscle mass. And since Lycanroc also knows play rough, it can easily finish off the fight with a G-Max Starfall. After getting the fourth gym badge, we made our way through the Glimwood Tangle. While walking around a maze-like forest, Mustard told me about how he used to train Leon and how he got lost on his way to the final trial, then somehow ended up all the way back on the mainland of Galar. I guess he brought it up because there's no way Leon could have gone through this tangly forest on his own. Anywho, we also battled this couple and managed to evolve Jang Mo in the process. And then we got to Balanly. Opo is a tricky old lady, asking her first stat boosting question right before we could switch Mianfu out with a U-turn. Thankfully, Luxray is bulky enough to swap in safely and takes down Opo's lead Pokemon with a pair of psychic fangs. Her meanwhile intimidates us, which will be a problem since Luxray is a physical attacker, but maybe not since that wild charge did some decent damage. Togekiss tries to be funny with Draining Kiss, but we survive thanks to Oppo's quiz question boost, and I just assume that Mustard does know the answers to all these things because they were rivals back in the day, he should probably know a thing or three about Oppo. Anywho, Luxray knocked itself out with a recoil from wild charge, leaving the floaty egg to its buddy Lycanroc, who swooped in for the attack buffing question. Our stone edge cut deep into the cake's HP, however Oppo healed herself with a G Max finale. But that didn't matter since any way you cut it, her all creamy was going down the next turn. Five badges in the bag, now let's go get some more. Hey Mustard, are we going or not? My bad, I can't just battle and bail, especially not with an old friend like Gail. Ugh, still calling me Gail. Sorry old friend, I couldn't resist the rhyme, so how have things been? Oh you know, still standing strong as a gym leader, although I have been looking for a replacement. You don't happen to have a student who's pink enough now, do you? Well, there is one student. Never mind, she's more of a purple. Send her over to audition just in case, will ya? How much longer are you gonna chat about random trainers? Oh my, did that Wulu just... Talk? <laughs> yes, Opal, meet Wulukins. Ah, uh, stop calling me Wulukins, my name's Vasco. But he does like to give people weird nicknames. Pleased to meet you, little one. Oh, hold on, what's this? Something wrong? We haven't met before, have we? No, well, I kinda lost all my memories, so maybe we have? Ah, the thing is, I can sense some of my fairy magic on you, but it's very, very faint. Seems like it's all but worn off. Oh, 
Now it makes sense. What makes sense? Mustard, explain. Hey, <laughs> hold your horses, Wulukins. Opal, the student who brought me this Pokemon, said he would change shape. And we were just wondering why it hasn't happened yet. Maybe you should send that student my way too. If they are this well versed in fairy magic, they would be an excellent fit for this gym. Ahem. Oh right, you must have had some of my Balanly tea in the past. If infused with fairy magic, it will let you change form to fit the true color of your soul. For example... <sighs> Ho oh, ho, Opal. Maybe I should have some of your tea, too. No way, Mustard. This tea isn't to be used so recklessly. I simply had some to demonstrate to the little one that the tea is safe to drink. That's pretty cool, Opal. He- I know, right? So, Opal, you don't remember giving this Balanly tea to this talking Pokemon? I do not, and I have not forgotten a single person or Pokemon who's had this specific tea with me before. Vasco here is definitely not one of them. Yet here I am. And yet, here you are. I will remember this one though. Thanks, Opal. Mmm, it smells so good. What am I supposed to do again? Drink the tea, Wulukins. That's not what he meant. Just close your eyes, and when you feel the warmth in your belly, create a visual image of the Pokemon you wish to become. The tea will do the rest. Sounds simple enough, but um, I'm pretty happy being a Wulu right now. Is Mustard happy? Me? Alright, little one. Enjoy the tea while we talk a bit more. Hmm, okay. Bloop, 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 bloop. Now then, Mustard, remind me again. What was that Pokemon you had all these years ago? Oh dear, you want to bring up those old memories now? Come now, jog my memory a bit. Okay, okay, I used to have a Cubfu. He was a feisty little bear, and I was a naive trainer, pushing it beyond its limits. We even won a battle against our greatest rival, you. But then, oh, what a fool I was. You hear that, little one? What's the story gotta do with anything? Oh, Paul, what did you- Deep down, this lost little Wooloo wants to make friends and create positive memories with the trainer he follows. He just wants to boost morale and provide support, and sometimes he needs to be something not Wooloo to do so. So, did the transformation thingy work or not? Here, take a look. Whoa, I'm a Kubfu now. You're welcome. Mustard and his Kubfu taking on the gym challenge just like the good old days. Can't wait to see how far you'll get this time. Well then, maybe we should get going. Best of luck, little one, and you too, Mustard. Thanks, Opal. See ya. Mustard got really quiet after I changed my form. I don't know if he still had to process old memories or was just in shock at my super cool shape-shifting ability. Since there was a lot of awkward silence to fill, I began to think about our upcoming matches. And then I remembered, our dragon still has the wrong ability. Typically, would go to the Crown Tundra and do a bunch of Dynamax adventures to collect enough ore for an ability capsule, but silly little me hadn't realized that there was another way this entire time. Mustard's son had created the Cramomatic, a machine with the body of the best bird Pokemon and the ability to create some pretty cool items, including an ability capsule. All I needed was the right ingredients, and lucky for me, the right ingredients were just three rare candy and any one random item. So on our way back to Hammerlock, we took a slight detour to pick up the rare candy near the fishing spot, then we took a stroll near the Pokeball statue for a second rare candy, and for the third one, well there was one back on route 3 but I may have eaten it already by accident. Don't look at me like that, you know I have a sweet tooth. Nothing to worry about though since we can just make another rare candy with the Cramomatic. This thing solves all your problems. Except we'll need to gather some pretty high value ingredients, so we collected a bunch of useful things on our way to Sir Chester, a big nugget by the stairs, a king's rock guarded by Phalanx, and a Corviknight from route 7. But we won't be throwing that one in the mix. So along with a comet shard and some armorite ore, we made ourselves the third rare candy, and with the three rare candy, we made an ability capsule. This is so much faster than grinding it out in the crown tundra. And with our team finally complete, it was time to fight Gordy. Hmm, why do I feel like I met this guy before? Anywho, the battle starts out with Nianfu versus Barbaco, and of course we gotta use Fake Out first, even though it doesn't do anything. It was the only hit Nianfu got to land since it got one shot by a razor shell. Given it's a rock and water type, Luxray was the best matchup against the Barnacle Bot, but even a super effective Wild Charge wasn't strong enough to one-shot. And of course, that gives Gordy the opening to set up a Shell Smash and outspeed us the next turn, knocking out Luxray with a Razor Shell. Thankfully, this Pokemon only had a few HP left, so Lycanroc can swoop in, tap it with an Accelerock, and finish off the first Pokemon. For some reason, Gordy sends out Shuckle next, but Shuckle is weak to Rock-type attacks, so it goes down in an instant. Stonejourner is what he should've sent out in the first place, except Gordy once again does something incredibly stupid, using Wonder Room to swap his 135 base defense stat with his 20 base special defense stat, turning his physical wall into a physical null. At this point it feels like
like he just thrown the match. Anywho, Cordy Dynamaxes Colosso and Lycanroc comes pretty close to getting the knockout but ends up fainting after being hit with a G-Max Vocalith. Bad news for Gordy is that there's no competition here. Corviknight is both fast and has moves that can do way more than 5 damage to his Dynamax. Good thing we didn't chuck this thing in the cram matic With Gordy out of the way, we made our way to Spike Myth and challenged Pierce, but on the way we got ourselves a water bike and managed to evolve our dragon into its final form, Kamoo. And at the start of the battle it hit me. Why hasn't Mianfu evolved yet? It's like level 45. Apparently, this thing just doesn't evolve until level 50, and here I thought I might have been missing some super weird evolution method. Nope, it's just a really high level cap. But even though it was not fully evolved, Mianfu had learned a pretty useful move, close combat, allowing it to knock out Pierce's first Pokemon. Unfortunately, it also shreds all of our defenses, meaning Mianfu can't take a hit from Malamar. While we try to play it rough, Pierce is more of a foul play guy, which works well against Luxray. Little does he know, Lycanroc can also play rough. Obstagoon is not only super bulky, but it's also very good at countering our attacks, which will be a big problem. Good thing we also have a big solution. Kamoo, who is also bulky and can pack a super strong punch, well, sphere, leaving Pierce with just his gun tank. He tries to sucker punch us, but our dragon scales protect us from such silly attempts. We then hit him with two rounds of clanging scales and finish off the fight. Thanks to that evolution, we were able to win against Pierce with ease. Though I highly doubt the battle with right hand will be such a breeze. Yep, definitely not a breeze. Mianfu fakes out Gigalith while Luxray goes after Flygon. However, right hand sees this coming and uses a breaking swipe to lower both of our Pokemon's attack stat before we can get our stronger hits in. And then he does it again! Good thing Mianfu used U turn, so now we can bring in someone who can do a decent amount of damage. We outsped Flygon and take it down, but both of our rough players took a ton of damage in the process. But hey, now Mianfu can come back out to the battlefield refreshed and ready to fake out a snake. Uh, of course, Lycanroc misses his attack that turn. We try again, doing some decent damage, getting a paralyzing glare and punching the snake in hopes of taking it down soon. And since we're ignoring the Gigalith for now, it easily squishes Lycanroc. Corviknight is out next, setting up a light screen, but it failed to protect Mianfu from an earth power. Okay, time to get serious. Kamoo finishes off Sandaconda with an Aura Sphere, and Corviknight goes after the Gigalith. Raihan responds by Dynamaxing his Skyscraper, and then scrapes Kamoo off the battlefield. Not good. Not good at all, man. Because that means I have to come out and battle this dude. Thankfully, Corviknight manages to finish off the Gigalith, so I'll just have one Pokemon to worry about. I wasn't too sure what right hand would do, so I decided to take one turn and max guard just in case. I knew it. He was gonna try to knock me out right away. Since he realized I might try to guard myself again, right hand decided to throw a max punch at Corviknight. He didn't knock us out, but he did get to buff up his dragon for the rest of the fight. But I too know how to throw around max punches, right hand. My punches may be weak, but now that his dragon is small, I am not so scared to fight it anymore. He tried to hit me with an iron head, but since he's so tiny, it wasn't too bad. And my new buddy Corviknight finished the battle off with a body press, meaning we've got ourselves all eight of the gym badges. How did I do, Mustard? Hmm, well, you definitely had me worried there for a minute. Really? How so? It just reminded me of the past. The past? Yeah, remember what Opal said about the Pokemon I lost? Oh yeah, you used to have a Kubfu back in the day too, right? Right. The trainer who gave me that Kubfu came from a distant region and told me that there was a way to unlock Kubfu's potential. He thought someone like me could figure out how. But then you didn't. Well, unfortunately not. As I learned later on in life, I was going about it all wrong at the time. How so? There are many ways to be strong. Alakazam do not draw their strength from brute force, nor do Milotic rely on their speed. And what about Kubfu? I used to think that strength came from effort and experience, so we'd spend weeks in the wild area taking down all sorts of opponents for practice. And it worked to an extent. I continued to push Kubfu in that direction, and it continued to push itself too. But eventually, we pushed too far and Kubfu... Mustard, I'm so sorry to hear that, but don't worry, you're not pushing me too far. And if you do, I'll be sure to whine and complain. I know. But what you did during the battle, it reminded me of Kubfu I had before. Of the Kubfu. Kubfu I failed. Well, I'm a whole nother Kubfu. But I don't want to fail you like I failed them. I would like to unlock your full potential. So now what? Ho ho, we just need to evolve you. Nope, not a, not a chance. But if you continue to push yourself as a timid little Kubfu, you won't get far in life. It's time to grow up, don't you think? Uh, no. I like being a Kubfu. You liked being Wulu, yet here you are, happy with your new form. You need to grow up, and I need to make up for my mistakes. And if you don't want to evolve, I won't let you battle when we get to Winden. Absolutely not. And I will join the battles at Winden, unevolved, when you fail to win against the trainers without my help. Fine, I'll just have to show you how strong I've gotten, and I won't need to 
just send you out a single time. Fine. Fine. Ugh, that mustard, what's gotten into him? First he goes quiet on me for a couple of battles, then he randomly tries to force me to evolve. What does he know anyways? He's got a whole island, a pretty wife, and loads of respect from the community, a genius son, and raised a literal champion prodigy. I'm just a little lost Wulu, barely getting by. He probably thinks he's doing me a favor, but he doesn't know anything about me, or where I'm going. Anyways, we made it to Winden, now let's see how poorly he does without any of my help. His first opponent is Marnie, candidate for the next dark type gym leader in Spike Myth, and and since she specializes in dark types, she's got a very bad matchup against old Mustard here. At first, Mianfu wasn't punching hard enough, but then she had the guts to hit us with a swagger, giving us enough of an attack boost to one-shot anything, including her fully healed Scrafty. Okay, maybe that Toxic Rook will be a problem. And the confusion too? Ha! <laughs> Getting a little too confident there, Mustard. Luxray is out next to intimidate the frog and one-shot it with a Psychic Fangs attack. Little more Peko is too squishy to play rough, just like Luxray is too squishy to do anything against Grimsnarl. Lycanroc isn't as squishy, but it needs better aim, and Corviknight swoops in to end the silly game. Guess he didn't need my help for this one. But Hop? Now Hop's gonna be a challenge, right? <laughs> it's Hop, he's not gonna be a challenge. Double sets up a Cotton Guard, making it bulky enough to handle our draining punches, and then take down Mianfu with a Zen headbutt. Kamoa's Aura Sphere doesn't care about the physical defense, finally taking down Hop's first Pokemon. Mustard uses the same strategy to lower Corviknight's health, but it's helpless against a Drill Peck. Luxray comes in to finish off the bird, but then gets stomped out by a Snorlax. Her own Corviknight enters the battle, using Body Press to finish off the second wall, then tries to get some damage in on the Pink Urchin before he gets zapped away with Thunderbolts. Lycanroc had no problem finishing off the Electric Spiky, but what's it gonna do against the big monkey? A big grass monkey! Nothing! The answer is nothing, which means it's my time to shine and show Mustard what's what. But first, I'll guard it to see what Hop's gonna try to do. Ha, <laughs> his super strong move. Not today, Hoppikins! Okay, maybe today. But it definitely wasn't strong enough to take me down. And now if you excuse me, as one with wind and cloud. <laughs> Easy win. No evolution needed after all. That just left Opal's protege, Bead. I wonder if this means Opal came to Winden to watch. Anywho, battle starts out with the finally evolved Mianxiao, who somehow became more useless by evolving. <laughs> no thanks. Corviknight spams Iron Head to take down Mawile, then continues to assert its dominance on Gardevoir and Rapidash, who are helpless against our Steel Bird. But Steel Birds are weak to fire, so Mustard has to come up with another strategy for the Dynamax. He zapped it with Luxray, missed with Lycanroc's bad aim, and finished it off with a flash cannon from Kamoa. Looks like Mustard still remembers how to handle the fairy types, huh? While still giving me the silent treatment, Mustard made his way over to Hammerlock since Rose has lost his marbles and decided to end the world before we can fight with Leon. Mustard wanted to help his student out, but Rose decided to get in the way. Y you know how it goes. Not sure what he's trying to stop with his Steel Bug and Steel Grass Pokemon. I guess Mianxiao did benefit a little bit from evolving. Corviknight also had a pretty strong body press that helped take out the rest of Rose's team, and Kamoa came in to finish off the fight with an Sphere. Upstairs, Leon had failed to defeat and capture Eternatus, putting all of Galar in danger. Good thing we're here to help. Mian Xiao fakes it out, then U turns to let Luxray into the fray. The Electric Lion is a great matchup here, since it can use Psychic Fangs, which take two turns to knock out the threat, allowing Mustard to capture it in a level ball. Huh, did he know it's my favorite type of Pokeball? In part because it has the letter V on it? Anyways, if Mustard's strong enough to defeat Eternatus on his own, I'm pretty sure he can handle Leon without me. Oh, about that. You're talking again! Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I lost my composure with you last time. I got a little too snappy with you as well. I should apologize too. Mm-hmm. So, what's up? Well, I'm pretty sure if I go with the team as is, Leon will win. To stand a chance, I really need you to evolve. Ah, uh, this again. I told you, I'm not evolving. At least hear me out, please. Fine. Thank you. First, the reason I'm even asking this of you, when we reach Leon, I can handle most of his Pokemon just fine, but not the Charizard, which means I'll have to rely on you at the climax of the battle. But what can you do against a Charizard, Cub Fu? Hmm, I could learn Thunder Punch and strike it down. But Charizard is faster than you and has a powerful flying type move that will knock you out in an instant. Oh, um, I can be used as fodder while you revive Lycanroc. No, no revives allowed. Remember what happened at the start? Ah, uh, fine. You can just lose then. Fasco! What? You! were the one who wanted me go on this whole journey and see me become champion, you agreed to help me out. And now, at the final stretch of it all, you will just let me down like that. Don't worry, at least I won't turn around and desert you. Actually, now that I think about it, I might need you to win. Not sure why, gut feeling. And I can do that, I just need you to evolve. Yes, <laughs> I don't wanna. Why are you being such a baby about this? I'm not. Okay, maybe I am. A little. A little? Ugh. <sighs> 
A lot. Well? I'm happy as I am. Are you? Are you really, though? Ah, uh, fine. There's a lot of things I've been worried about, especially things that are coming up in the near future. I am fine as I am at the time being, but I really don't know if that's gonna be enough for when the time comes. And what have you done about it? Nothing. I've just kind of been cruising for a while, doing the same things at the same pace. I haven't had much time to learn new things and grow, you know? Just been grinding for levels. Well then, let's take some time and learn something new, eh? I thought we were gonna go battle 500 Chansey or something to level me up. Haha, <laughs> you silly muffin. Cub food do not gain their strength through experience and effort. Huh? I thought that's how everyone gains strength. That's what I used to think too. And that's how I lost my friend all those years ago. But I've learned since then. There are many different ways to be strong. And cub food gain their strength through friendship and learning. Ew, the power of friendship? Hehehe, <laughs> I know, right? We're already friends, though, so you just need to focus on the learning part. That's another way to grow, after all. Best way to grow. Spoken like a true nerd, so what do you say? Fine, I'll give it a shot. Great, let's go. Hmm, now are you more like water or more like darkness? la ti da ti da Yeah, he totally lied about the not having to hunt Chansey part. I guess it was more for the rest of the team, though, since they were all underleveled. While he was off grinding for experience, Mustard asked me to climb up this tower where where I had to face off against 5 trainers in a row. All of them had water type Pokemon, so it was a pretty easy fight for me each time. I'm pretty sure my Thunder Punch is strong enough to take on Leon's Charizard, but eh, whatever. What wasn't whatever was Mustard waiting at the top of the tower with another Kupfu! He could've just evolved that one! Whatever. We just took turns hitting each other with air waves, but since I was over leveled, I managed to win with ease. And all of this was just to show me some random scroll. Weirdly enough, I could understand exactly what it said. Reading it made me kinda tired, but this was the first time that reading put me to sleep. When I came to, we were back in Winden, ready to face Leon. Uh, okay. The battle starts out with Edgeslash versus Mianxiao, and good thing we know Blaze Kick because there is absolutely nothing else we could have done here to damage the Sword and Shield Pokemon. And since Leon was kind enough to leave it in attack mode, Mustard could quickly use a U-turn to finish off the Edgeslash and swap out Mianxiao. Lycanroc was out next against Haxorus, and it set up some Stealth Rocks for chip damage, then attacked with Play Rough. Leon's Iron Tail wasn't strong enough to one-shot us, giving Lycanroc the opening to knock out the first dragon. Inteleon was out next, but it was too slow and squishy, so we one-shot it with a stone edge. Ah, there's the second dragon. Sorry, Lycanroc. The bad news for Leon is that Luxray can also use Crunch and is quite bulky, catapulting Dragapult back to its Pokeball. An Evil Clown was out next, but as it turns out, Evil Clowns are scared of bugs, and Mianxiao gets to return to safety once more. With 3 against 1, I'm starting to think I really didn't need to evolve to win this. Anywho, Leon's Charizard takes major damage from the Stealth Rocks, Dynamax and wind blasts poor Kamoa out of existence. Out next is Corviknight, who gets outsped and melted by a flying wild flame. And that leaves Mianxiao. I guess it's all up to me now. Whoa, this does feel a bit different. I don't think I need to Dynamax though. Since I am now also part water type, Leon tries to set up a solar beam instead of attacking me with winds, and that gives me the perfect opening to hit him with my new move. Surging Strikes, a series of critical water type hits, except I just needed to hit him once to knock him out. Whoops. And with that, I have my answer. Could Mustard still take on the Galar Gym Challenge and become champion once more? Absolutely. But is he gonna? No, because he wants to go on play the wrong quest game. Anyways, good job Mustard, you've won this one. Hehe, <laughs> it was all thanks to you evolving. I guess so, but you did most of the hard work. I just came in to give Charizard a tiny little tap. <laughs> Uh, so now what? Good question, I don't know. <laughs> Opal, good to see you again. I see the little one has evolved. Yep. But, uh, why does he look like that? Out of budget. What? 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 Well, uh, you can use the power of the Balon Lee Tea to change back to a Kafu if you'd like. He can do that? Uh, yeah, but it does count as a form change, and he can only use its power about six or seven times. Judging by how little fairy magic he had left, I could tell he's definitely done this exactly seven times before. Does it make him lose his memory when he runs out of changes? N no, but the student you sent over seems to know something about the memory loss. Clara? Who's that? What did you just say? Mustard, I'm scared. She looks like she wants to poison me. <laughs> hey there, Clara. Has Opal been treating you well? Yes, she has. Anyways, before this forgetful Wooloo runs off, I need to talk to you, Mustard. Me? Oh. The time has come. Oh me, oh my, really? Unfortunately, Unfortunately, yes, but not here. And how exactly do you know? Because he lost his memories. 
That is the most bizarre made-up sign I've ever heard of. I thought it was ridiculous at first, too, until I saw it. Saw what? The, the portal. portal. Portal? Yeah. When Eternatus woke in Galar, it created an interdimensional hole, which it uses to funnel in energy. Incidentally, it also ends up linking our world with another nearby. Avery has been diverting the portal to prevent anything from going in or out. However, there has been some spillover. He couldn't exactly keep it safe while it was stuck in the underground labs, and one of the things that leaked over was a powerful curse placed on Mr. Secret Armor there by a boy named Alistair. That sounds a bit far-fetched, even for you, Clara. That's not even the half of it. Since the curse is close enough to leak over, that means the portal will lead Secret Armor back to where it all began. And we, we need to go there too. We do? Why is that? Because the Galar region there is in danger. Secret armor over here isn't much of a secret, and the legendaries that guard Galar are on high alert and have become quite aggressive. That does sound like the time to me, but he's evolved now so he can protect himself, right? Does he look like he can do that? Hehe, <laughs> I guess not. Hey! My bad, my bad, he can, he can. Take this seriously, Mustard, because he's not the only one in danger there. Everyone in Galar has already been affected by this. In the trainer he follows will likely become their biggest target. And who might that be? Very funny, Mustard. Okay, okay, I get it. So, is that the portal over there? Mm-hmm. It'll take us any moment now. Uh, hey guys, I'm kinda scared. Don't worry, you probably won't remember any of this either. Since Avery got a hold of the portal, the curse stopped leaking through, so it will reapply itself once you enter the portal. Uh, that sounds pretty bad. I'm gonna be lost, confused, and public enemy number one? Don't worry, we'll be there to look out for you. Yeah. But, but Besides... I don't think you'll forget everything. Really? Yeah, remember how you had gut feelings about things and they all seemed to turn out right? Oh yeah! Your mind may forget, but your body will remember. Muscle memory is another way to gain strength. You must have learned a lot during these journeys that's helped you grow along the way. You are quite strong, Willukins. Strong enough to take on a legendary Pokemon? Strong enough to take on any legendary Pokemon. You make a good point there, Mustard. Well, I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Just trust yourself, you muffin. Whoa! Here we go! Oh wait, I just remembered my lines. Subscribe. Sub sub subscribe. 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 subscribe.